Let's install Grid Tracker on our Raspberry Pi. Okay, the first thing we're going to do to set up Grid Tracker is to go find Grid Tracker on the internet. We're going to type Grid Tracker. And there's their home page. Okay, here we are at uh, the Grid Tracker website. And you can see that uh, they have been a little bit inactive, like a lot of projects. This was start, started by Stephen Tag Loomis. Uh, his first uh, release of Grid Tracker was in February of 2018, so it hasn't been around too long. His call sign is N0TTL. Uh, they have a lot going on. They have, uh, I would urge you all to go and check out the website. They have a groups.io uh, grid tracker group. I'll leave links to that and the website in the description. We're going down here and we're going to choose the version that's for the Raspberry Pi. You can see there are lots of versions for other operating systems. So we're going to choose the one for the Raspberry Pi and download it. It's not that big of a program, doesn't take that long. So it's going to wind up in your downloads folder and you're going to navigate on your Raspberry Pi to your downloads folder where you will see the file. You'll open up the file and there it is and if you right click on it you can go down and extract here. I would suggest you leave it there because all of the directions refer to it being in the download section. If you're savvy at programming and figuring this stuff out you could move it but I left it right here because the directions to setting it up refer to it being in the downloads folder. Inside the folder is a readme file which you can open up and read but it all tells you one thing. You're going to take that icon in the upper right hand corner and you're going to put it on the desktop. In this case I'm going to actually put it uh, into the desktop file because that's essentially what it says but it doesn't really matter. You're going to put it on the desktop. You're going to leave, if you leave everything else alone, that's all you have to do. Move that icon onto the desktop or into the desktop folder, and you're ready to go. From there, you can launch Grid Tracker. But we're not going to launch it right away. Uh, instead, we're going to start WSJTX. And remember that I had set this up in the previous video so that you start CQR log and from there you start WSJTX. So that's what we're going to do. The reason we're doing this is so that uh, Grid Tracker can find WSJTX where it's at, make its connections, and set itself up. Uh, if you don't run WSJTX first, you're going to have to do a little setup, but this will automatically get Grid Tracker all set up. We'll know as soon as we start Grid Tracker if we actually have it, if it's found its connection and everything uh, by taking a quick look at it. So here we are. We've got uh, WSJTX up and running. I'm just going to make sure it's actually uh, talking and sending out signals. Now we're going to launch Grid Tracker and we're going to not run it in the terminal. We're just going to run it and it's going to start up. And once it starts up, we're going to be able to take a look at it. And here we are. It is up and running. It takes a little bit to get everything talking correctly. And it is just about up and ready to go here. Good Tracker opens with an information window. Uh, telling you about general information about the program, about program updates, and there are five pages of this, so you're 
there's quite a bit of information that you can glean by looking through this, but this is a, uh, just the opening screen. Here's what the map itself looks like, and we'll see it up and working by the end of this video. Notice the gear down here opens that same window up again in case you need to refer back to it or you get you want more information you can just continue uh, scrolling down through the five pages of information but for right now we're just going to the general tab where you can see that port 2237 is the one that grid tracker wants to talk to unfortunately that's also the one that cqr log is using so at the moment uh, Grid Tracker is not communicating effectively with uh, WSJTX. I'm going to pause the video, make a couple of adjustments, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I had to do a couple of things to get Grid Tracker working with CQR Log and WSJTX. After I made the changes I'm going to show you, I then shut down. WSJTX, CQR Log, and Grid Tracker. Then I restarted them, started CQR Log, remoted WSJTX, and then started Grid Tracker. Now I'm going to show you the changes that I made. First, I didn't make any changes in WSJTX, but I want to show you what happens as you're running WSJTX. Under reporting, there is a UDP server that is sending out information on the local host, which is 127.0.1. And it's sending it to address 2237. The way it was set up when we were just using WSJTX and CQR log was that this address was going to CQR log. WSJTX is looking at the same address. You cannot have it pointing in two places at once. They fight over it and nothing gets done. So remember 2237 is right here. So if we go to Grid Tracker and we go to Settings right here, that little gear, you'll notice right here it says Receive UDP Messages 2237. So the, the message or the information that's coming into J, WSJTX is first sent to Grid Tracker to this address, 2237. Then Grid Tracker forwards it, and in this case, it's forwarding it to 2238. These numbers can actually be changed. I just left it at 2238, but I enabled forwarding. So now the information is being forwarded. So let me go to CQR log, and I'll show you where that appears. So under Preferences, Okay, running a little slow, but that's okay. I'm not sure I have this overclocked. Under the FL Digi WSJTX uh, tab, you'll notice over here, run WSJTX, entering remote, so forth. Address, I changed it from 2237 to 2238. So now CQR log is getting its information from WSJTX through Grid Tracker. Grid Tracker is forwarding it. So that makes it all work together. Uh, I did restart everything just to get the information into the systems correctly. Okay, so let me just close that and minimize that. And here we have Grid Tracker running. And let me show you some of the things I like about it. You can see right here where the traffic is. In other words, on 20 meters right now, we're getting off from the west coast where I am right here. We're getting to the east coast pretty well. Okay. And uh, when I was setting everything up, there were actually a couple of stations that were reaching down into South America here. 
Um, I like this right here. It's showing the activity on the bands, even though we're not tuned to them. It's picking up uh, DX cluster information and displaying it for us. So we can see what bands are active. Of course, in the middle of the day here, uh, 50, 20 meters is the most active. So I'm just going to click on a station to show you how it operates when it, we're transmitting. I'm going to double click on the first one so we move down one. And in one of my other vid videos, I mentioned that the default here on line four is RRR. You can change it to RR73 if you want to. I'm just going to leave it that way right now. But you can see I'm transmitting, and you can see where the station is right here, down on the Gulf Coast. Uh, if I hover over it, okay, is it showing me what state? Uh, nope. Okay. Okay, he, he is working. No, he's not. It looks like we're on top of another station. Yep. Well, he's coming in awfully strong. I don't know. I hope he can hear me. Uh, 20 meters in the daytime is a very active band. There's a lot of traffic, as you can see up at the top. And I'm getting out about 40 watts of power. I don't know if I mentioned in this video, but I'm running an ICOM 7300. I'm using two cables to connect. And I, this is a Raspberry Pi with 8 gigs of RAM and he has picked someone else up. Okay. We'll try a different station. WA5SEC. Let's see. Okay, we're going into the Midwest here. Okay, here we are. I kind of like leaving the RRR that way. Uh, I get to see a 73 before I send mine. Okay, I'm going to leave this popped up like it is right now. We're not going to log this quite yet. But I want to show you some of the things you can do within Grid Tracker if you so desire. Okay, if you go here to... Okay, I'm not where I want to be. Let's see, value, not value. Oh, I got to... Dismiss that. You get alerts when you're uh, making contacts. Forgot about that. Okay, if you go into logging, you'll notice that you can do qrz.com, you can do club log, you can do hrdlog.net, uh, you can do cloud log. I don't know anything about that. I don't have to learn about it, I guess. You can do eqsl. You can do Logbook of the World right from here. You don't have to do it from uh, your regular program. You can do take this and you can log it into N1MM Logger if you happen to be on Windows. 
log4om, the same thing, n3 uh, fjp, uh, same thing, DX Keeper, or the Ham Radio Deluxe Logbook. You can log to any of these. So what I'm going to do right now is we're going to set this up so that I log to one of these programs. Um, I guess we can do EQSL. Uh, put in my call sign. I'll look up my password. My password book is falling apart. Okay. Okay, and we're going to put in a nickname. I hope I get this part right. Let's see if I wrote it down in my book. Yep. Okay, and let's test it. What I like about this, you can actually see if it's going to work. Okay, so you see it passed right there. So I'm going to close this now. And there's a section down here, I think it'll show. Um, it shows activity, see right in here? I guess I should have made it bigger before. Uh, okay, let's go back to here. And let's hit OK to log this. And you see right here, log to EQSL, log to Grid Tracker Backup. And let's see if I can find, I don't know if I have, okay, let's show QSO list, okay, and what did we just do, WA, there it is right there, okay. Is that right? March 22nd? Wow, okay. So it logged it into the logbook and it also logged it uh, into EQSL all in one fell swoop. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, this is Ken W6BZY. Uh, if you found this video helpful, I'll be doing more videos on the Raspberry Pi and logging and digital ham radio. So. Stay tuned, uh, give me a thumbs up, and uh, if you'd like to be notified, hit the bell and subscribe. In the meantime, this is Ken W6BZY wishing you a good day and 73s.